Good morning, wet shavers and podcast lovers everywhere. It's Mark with georgetune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put on your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. Just to bring you up to speed, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning again, and welcome to another Second Cup episode. Thanks so much for tuning in, and happy Halloween. Here it is, October 31st, 2022. Wow, where did the year go? It's Halloween. I can't believe it. And I hope you're ready for all the trick-or-treaters that will, will be coming to your front door. I know I sure am. And I mentioned on the Monday morning mailbag, we get about 350 kids. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 350 kids, anywhere from 300 to 350 kids trick-or-treating in the neighborhood. Now, in the development, it's just a really, really big deal. Uh, I know that neighbors, they invite other people from other neighborhoods uh, into the area. They have these big parties. They have these uh, uh, open bonfires out front. Uh, they order pizza and all kinds of other food. And they just have these really big, big parties for the kids. And the kids go trick-or-treating. The costumes are great. One dad has one of these utility 4x4 four four vehicles. You know the ones I'm talking about, uh, Polaris, Cub Cadet, John Deere, Gator, Kawasaki, those kinds of vehicles. And he tows a long trailer, and on the back of the trailer, he makes this large haunted house you know, with cobwebs and flashing lights and music playing. And uh, there's anywhere from 12 to 15 kids on the back of this trailer, and he just pulls them all around the neighborhood uh, from street to street. And, uh, you know, they jump off and then start trick-or-treating up and down the street and then jump back onto the trailer, and he drives off to another section of the uh, development uh, where they <laughs> repeat the process again. It's really amazing. And, yeah, when I say about 350 kids, yeah, that's what I was told by the neighbors when I first moved in. You're going to get about 300 to 350 kids. And no kidding, I have 400 pieces of candy, about 80 bucks worth of candy that I purchased, and it's a great time. Uh, you get to see these great costumes, and uh, you meet the neighbors, you talk to the parents and say hello. It's a great time just to kind of get together with everybody and see how things are going, and uh, really, really a nice, nice time. So I'm all ready, and uh, yeah, some kids will get an extra piece of candy here and there, sure. But uh, I usually I usually have very, very little candy remaining uh, by the end of the trick-or-treat session. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, like I say, it's great to see the neighbors. Just families out there trick-or-treating and all the parties and uh, all these uh, little uh, contained bonfires, these little portable fire pits that people put out. It really is a lot of fun. Well, anyhow, I hope uh, you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I have a um, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I'm <laughs> really looking forward to enjoying this cup of coffee with you as we uh, talk a little bit of wet shaving this morning. Again, great to be with you. Let's kick things off with something that I mentioned in the Monday morning mailbag this morning. Uh, it came from James Sefton. Uh, he has Barrister's Reserve shave soap. He has the Fern Scent. And uh, this is an upgrade to Barrister and Mann's standard soap base. Now, I forgot to mention this in the Monday morning mailbag, and I decided to do a little more research on this to find out if there is a difference between 
the Barrister and Ban Standard Soap Base and the Barrister's Reserve. And there is, and I failed to mention this in my apologies, but Second Cup allows me to kind of, uh, you know, catch up and add some additional information that I may have forgotten in the Monday morning mailbag. And uh, I did a little research on this and I went to the Barrister and Man Amazon product page and here's their description of Barrister's Reserve. Our best, most soothing aftershaves and slickest, most protective soaps. Barrister's Reserve will leave your skin feeling soft, refreshed, and irritation-free. To top it off, we reverse-engineered discontinued aftershave fragrances to bring some of the best classics out of retirement. Now, that sounds like Phoenix shaving, if you ask me. Very, very familiar. This is what Douglas Smythe has been doing for quite some time. And uh, the Barrister's Reserve uh, versus the Barrister and Man sounds like it's similar to, say, Phoenix Shaving CK1 versus the Upgrade CK6, the, those two soap bases. So I think some artists and shave companies and some other larger commercial operations like Barrister and Man are doing this. They're, they, they maintain their original standard soap base and and then they're offering an upgrade to it. And that's what it sounds like Barrister's Reserve is. Now, one review on Amazon uh, from a customer there named Dr. Halls, he gave Barrister's Reserve five out of five stars. The scent was the Reserve Spice, and he posted this back in January of 2020. And he wrote, I'm not the biggest fan of this scent, as it smells more like sandalwood, completely subjective. However, this soap with the reserve base performs much better than my favorite Barrister and Man soap, Seville, with the standard base. Let me stop right there. Uh, viewer Mike H. sent along a Barrister and Man shave soap for me to try and review and share with the viewers, and it is the Seville scent, and I'm really looking forward to trying that, and uh, now I'm very curious to see what the difference between the standard base and the reserve base is going to be. Uh, this uh, Dr. Hall's uh, review on Amazon continues, Overall, I am delighted with this product and will eventually try the other fragrances in the reserve series of Barrister and Man soaps. Well, that sounds terrific. Sounds very, very promising. And the reserve soap base by Barrister and Man is getting a lot of good reviews on the Amazon product page. So I'll link to uh, this particular uh, Barrister and Man product page on Amazon so you can you can check it out and where you can see all the uh, Barrister and Man soaps, the reserve soaps, and also the standard base Barrister and Man soaps. So my thanks again to James Sefton for mentioning Barrister's Reserve. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad he did. I'm glad I talked about it on the Monday morning mailbag. I just forgot to mention that this is an upgrade to their standard soap base. So uh, hopefully I'll follow up on that point again in the, uh, the next Monday morning mailbag. And I'm sure as comments come in from viewers, uh, there will be some who will point this out and my thanks to them as well. It'll serve as a reminder for me to follow up on it in the, uh, the refill segment. Thanks again, James. Really, really do appreciate you sending along the information and the photo of the uh, Barrister's Reserve Fern Scented Shave Soap. Viewer Chuck Price emailed me recently and uh, he said, just saw this on Amazon, half off, Wow, he's referring to the Vikings Blade original Godfather three-piece safety razor. This is the long-handled razor. It comes with a luxury case and uh, about five, uh, five razor blades, five of the uh, Vikings Blade mild razor blades, I believe. Now, uh, this was one of the original razors that I purchased from uh, Vikings Blade uh, many, well, I want to say many years ago, several years ago. And um, the first razor was the Chieftain, and I love the Chieftain. I think the Chieftain is a fantastic razor. But after purchasing the Chieftain and doing a review on it, they then turned around and said, okay, uh, we're going to make you a VIP. Now, I'm sure they did this all, to all customers that offered a review, that sort of thing. And they gave you a discount on other razors that uh, were available, uh, the Godfather being one of the newer ones that they had launched. 
And I don't know, the discount was maybe 15, 20%, something like that. I can't remember. But this particular Godfather razor, which is the same one I have, is now marked down 49%. Uh, it was priced at about $36.97. It's now $18.97. This is a beautifully chromed razor. It has a lot of nice heft. It's three-piece. It has a tech style or tech-like razor head. Uh, it is beautifully, beautifully mild. This was one of the first razors that I had used a feather blade in because I knew of the mild quality of this razor. And uh, it really tamed that feather blade, but the feather blade also upped the efficiency a little bit of this razor. A really terrific razor to use. I like it a lot. Now, I know that there are other razors out there made by others uh, that uh, similar, uh, that look uh, very, very much like the Godfather razor from Vikings Blade. And I don't know if those are knockoffs of the original Godfather or what is going on, but I recall the Godfather uh, being the first on the market. At least I saw it first. And I think that some of these others were just knockoffs, maybe... Um, Maybe the manufacturer over in Asia was making it for Vikings Blade and then said, hey, that's a really nice design. We can knock it off and uh, sell it on our own, that sort of thing. It's, that's, you, you'll see that that does happen quite often um, when it comes to wet shaving products. But I really do prefer the Godfather uh, three-piece safety razor. It's a terrific razor. I need to use that again and uh, you know actually work with it and have it on reviews. Now, the Godfather Stonehenge is a terrific upgrade from the original Godfather. That is a wonderful razor. The handle is similar in shape and size, but with more heft because I believe it's stainless steel. And the razor head is a slightly different design uh, as well. Still tries to maintain that tech look. But the Godfather razor, the original Godfather razor, is really, really very, very good. And I recall that because I was a VP, VIP rather, I got it at a discount. Uh, gee, what's 2016, 2017, something like that. A terrific, terrific razor. So if you're looking for a really nice, well-made, beautifully chromed uh, safety razor, check out the Godfather on Amazon. It's only $18.97. And uh, I don't know how long the sale is going to last, but... Uh, it is very, very good, and I think there's a 12-month warranty that goes with it uh, against uh, workmanship and defects. So uh, that's pretty good, too. So check that out. I'll have a link to it. My thanks to Chuck Price for passing along the heads up on the Vikings Blade Original Godfather Razor. 49% off, $18.97. Pretty darn good deal. Thanks again, Chuck. Really do appreciate it. I recently did a review on Farmhouse North's Ice Woods Shave Soap. What a terrific lather that soap built. I really, really enjoyed it. And in the comments section, viewer Steve M. Uh, noted this. Farmhouse looks great. Although it doesn't affect the actual shave, I'd like to see some more interesting labels and artwork. I don't recall you mentioning the price. As a smaller artisan, it is a necessary piece of data for me to even consider and differentiate in a crowded market. Well, Farmhouse North has a very clean label, and I think in that way it stands out to me. I'm able to differentiate it from a lot of my other shave soaps just by seeing the clean label look of it. I mean, you know, to each his own, Steve, I think your point is well taken, and uh, I think it's a very, very good constructive piece of criticism. Anyhow, the owner, Jennifer Cook, responded with this. Hi, Steve. I appreciate the feedback. My branding is definitely a more clean look than many of the artisans in the shave soap market, and I understand that's not necessarily for everyone, but the usual art I see just doesn't quite fit my particular site. However, my CP soaps do have some fun art on the bands, and I do some more colorful stuff on my special edition shave soaps. In terms of price, I'd say I'm positioned a bit under many of the others for the time being, 
Hope this explanation helps. And Steve said, no worries. Always enjoy the show. He directed that both to myself and to Jennifer. And I think it's a very, very valid point. Label art is very, very important. And, you know, even with my uh, show, Monday Morning Mailbag and my shave soap reviews, I want to have some graphics and uh, some other, and music and some other elements that really set it apart from everybody else's broadcast. Yeah, that's very important. Branding is very, very important. And I think, again, the label that she has is nice and clean and fits her soap. Now, as far as price, I did have a screenshot of the product page, but maybe I should have zoomed in on the price. It's uh, $15 for a four and a half ounce tub of uh, tallow and kokum butter. Uh, and it's in an eight, it's, it's contained in an eight ounce container. That's great because it makes so much lather. It's great to have that extra space so the lather doesn't overflow from the soap if you're doing a really, really nice brush load. It's a terrific shave soap. And yeah, I love the label art that a lot of the um, artisans have out there. Of course, my favorite is the Future Fiction label art from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, if you haven't seen it, get up to their product page and take a look at Future Fiction. It has a Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers kind of look uh, with the hero fighting off a large mechanical robot. Just great, great 1940s comic artwork kind of look. A throwback to the great uh, Superman cartoons of the 1940s by the Fleischer Animation Studios. If you haven't seen those, hey, more on that a little later in the show. Anyhow, my thanks to Steve and Jennifer for a really nice, lively, polite discussion. Really do appreciate it, folks. Speaking of artisan shave soaps, Beth Jones very kindly sent this along. Mark, I know this is too late for your Monday morning mailbag, but I thought it might be early enough that you can include it in your second cup podcast. All the best. Absolutely, Beth. Thank you so much for sending this along. I really do appreciate it. This is why we have the Second Cup podcast in order to make these kinds of announcements. Hoffman's Shave and Soap Company is having a dual drop this Friday, November 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, here it is, folks. Dual drop number four. And he writes, Robert writes, hey, peeps, we are still trucking along. Thanks again for your kindness and support. Everyone has been amazing. Hope you enjoy your Halloween safe with your friends and family. Next Friday, November 4th, dual drop. He's got a couple of shave soaps coming out. The first is Bushido, The Way of the Warrior. This is a nice fall winter style scent. Notes of tonka bean, Italian bergamot, allspice, applewood, patchouli, cedarwood oak moss, cardamom, and vanilla bourbon. Very comforting scent profile. And he also has Phantom 309, The Legend of Big Joe. This is a banger as well, he writes. You get sweet leather and suede. Notes of bergamot, leather, lavender, geranium, cypress, sandalwood, suede, spice musk, and tobacco. Very masculine and also comforting. We hope you enjoy the vision and looking forward to bringing you more cool stuff. It's truly my honor. And as always, thank you. Well, there it is right there. I'll have a link to Hoffman's Shave Soap Company where you can get this on pre-order. Bushido, very much done in the samurai kind of a vibe. That's what the artwork looks like. We've been talking about artwork labeled very, very much in a Japanese samurai kind of style uh, label artwork. Really, really looks terrific. And, of course, uh, Phantom 309 has a rocketing truck uh, racing across the road. Really dynamic-looking label for that. Yeah, that was really terrific. It's based on, from what he writes here, Red Sovine released the song Phantom 309 in 1967, almost a decade before CB trucking songs became super popular. So that's kind of where the inspiration for this uh, named Shave Soap comes from. So there it is right there, folks. And they also have pre-order on a couple of other shave soaps, Red Hollow and also The Great Escape. Boy, The Great Escape. <laughs> That's a great looking train on the label. Check that out. That is awesome. I love that label art. And again, uh, this goes back to label art and shave soaps that we just talked about. 
and everybody, uh, I think, has their own vision and the way they want to brand their product. And as I say, uh, it makes it distinctive and helps to stand out. Sometimes a clean label really, really makes it stand out. And other times uh, when you get some of this really, really great looking art, that also works as well. So to each his own. But uh, there you go. Uh, Hoffman's Dual Drop coming out this Friday. My thanks to Beth Jones very, very much for sending this along. Thank you so much, Beth. This is absolutely why we have the Second Cup podcast for late-breaking news and sales like this. Thank you so much again, Beth. Well, since I mentioned the label art of Phoenix Shaving's Future Fiction, let me share with you a couple of comments I received regarding the review on Phoenix Shaving's Black Shroud Shave Soap. Now, this is an homage to Fabergé's Wood Hue that was released back in 1944, and it was the only scent that Dean Martin wore. He absolutely loved this scent, and Black Shroud is an absolutely spectacular, spectacular scent. Viewer W. Ross wrote, Yeah, bought mine and finally have a scent I only want to use all the time. Well, <laughs> exactly how Dean Martin felt about Wood Hue. That's great to hear. W. Ross, I'm so glad that you got some and that you're enjoying using it. Uh, viewer Mark Bagwell uh, also commented, what impresses me is their Phoenix Shavings. What impresses me is Phoenix Shavings ability to match vintage scents so perfectly. I agree. I don't know how Douglas does it. He does his research. He understands the history of all this stuff. Uh, had it not been for Black Shroud, I never would have known about Wood Hue by Fabergé. I wouldn't have known about it. And that's the other reason why I like uh, Phoenix Shaving and many of these other artists and soap makers out there because they do their research. They find these vintage scents. They bring them back for the 21st century wet shaving market, and we all benefit from it. And it just adds to the pure enjoyment of doing the traditional wet shave. I really, really love the process, but I also love the history and the research that goes into it by uh, Phoenix Shaving and these other artisan soap makers. Really, really terrific. I know Spearhead's another one that goes back to find these vintage scents and bring them back. Absolutely wonderful to see. And again, we all benefit it. We all benefit from it as traditional wet shavers. Really, really terrific. So, folks, I'll have a link to Phoenix Shaving's Black Shroud. Check out the review as well. I was really impressed with it. I absolutely love the scent, and I understand why Dean Martin liked it so much, and as does viewer W. Ross. Gentlemen, thanks so much for the comments. Really do appreciate it. I received the following email from a viewer named Brian, and he wrote, Mark, good morning. I'm new to wet shaving and thoroughly enjoy your videos. Hey, Brian, thanks very much for the nice words. I really do appreciate it. He continues, I have a shave hack that I would like to share. I think it's not new and I'm just late to the party. I was going to go out and buy a jar to dispose of my old blades. But as I was finishing up using my Parasso pre-shave, I had an epiphany. I should use this jar for my old blades. So that's what I did. Works great and costs me nothing. Again, I am sure this idea is not new. Take care and have a great day there. Respectfully, Brian. Brian, this is a new idea to me, to be perfectly honest with you. And this might be a little bit of a preview to some of the listeners out there for a great shaving tip for the uh, viewer shaving tip segment on an upcoming Monday morning mailbag. I never thought to use the Parasso pre-shave jar for old blades. I have one of those, and I've just hung on to it, thinking maybe I'll fill it with Noxzema and use that for a pre-shave, or, um, I don't know, use it for something, some sort of uh, other repurposing utility. Uh, and you know what? This is a good one right here. Used razor blades. Fantastic, fantastic idea of repurposing this jar for used razor blades. I like that idea a lot. So thanks for passing it along. Uh, it may not be a new idea, as I say, but it's new to me. So thank you very, very much. And I think it's probably going to be new to many listeners out there. Uh, they might be on 
the last little bit of Parasol pre-shave in that jar. And now, hey, you've got something to dispose of your used razor blades. Now, also, I would think that rather than throw out the entire jar, you would just remove the blades, put them in some other kind of container and take them off to the recycle center, something like that. Uh, and, you know, be safe doing that. But this is a really, really good, good idea. I like it a lot. And it's one I will consider using myself. So, Brian, thank you very, very much for sending that along. Really, really do appreciate it. In previous Monday morning mailbags, we have talked about bodybrush.com. Now, viewer Rodney Ripplinger alerted us to the Shield SE Razor available on bodybrush.com. But they also offer a lot of wonderful shaving gear, of course, Shaving brushes are one of their specialties, and they very kindly sent along a brush handle with three screw-in shaving knots. Really, really amazing. The handle is a beautiful wooden handle with a wonderful design, multicolored, striped kind of design, and three different size shaving knots. It looks to be like maybe a 23 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, and a 26 millimeter. The 26 millimeter knot is beautifully soft. I cannot tell you how soft this knot is. The fibers are very, very soft, just makes for a wonderful face lathering brush. The other two knots have a little more backbone and also appear to be suitable for both face lathering and bowl lathering. But the neat thing is the base of the knots are threaded so they screw right into the handle. So you can have one brush handle and a variety of shaving knots to go along with it. Now I'll link bodybrush.com in the description below so you can go up there and explore that. Uh, I see that product right there on their main page right now as I'm logging in and uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about right there on one of the top images that you can scroll through there. Really, really very, very neat. So my thanks to the folks at bodybrush.com for sending along this brush handle and interchangeable shaving knots. We're going to get a review on this done, and we'll also feature this on an upcoming Monday morning mailbag, probably the Monday morning mailbag running on November 7th. That's what I plan to do. So you can actually see this handle and see the screw in knots and how it works. Really, really neat idea. And uh, I've already used the 26 millimeter brush knot with the handle, and it did a beautiful, beautiful job in developing a wonderful, wonderful face lather using, uh, <laughs> you guessed it, future fiction from Phoenix Shaving. All right, bodybrush.com. I'll have a link below. My thanks to the folks at bodybrush.com for sending these along and allowing me to share this brush handle and interchangeable knots with all the viewers and listeners. Now, previously in the podcast, we were talking about label art, and I mentioned this great-looking label art uh, that Phoenix Shaving has for future fiction. It has that great 1940s comic book kind of look to it, Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, a uh, large mechanical robot. It's just terrific. I immediately identified with it. This was the first shave soap that I used from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, and I'm telling you, this was this caught my eye. This is why I use the shave soap. Uh, being a cartoonist and having just grown up with all these great, great cartoons and comic books, uh, it's exactly why I was pulled to future fiction. I love, love, love this label art on it. Uh, and the reason why I love this label art is because it resonated with me in its familiarity to the Fleischer Brothers Superman short cartoons, animated cartoons that were made back in the 1940s. These are absolutely amazing. Now, as you guess, we're getting into the recommend a movie segment of the podcast. Uh, get up to YouTube and get over to 8thmandvd.com's cartoon channel on YouTube and look up uh, the Superman cartoon shorts. These were uh, cartoon shorts produced by the Fleischer Studios in the 1940s using cutting-edge animation techniques of the day. Uh, they are absolutely amazing, and 8th Man DVD has restored these, digitally restored these to their 
original Technicolor glory. They look absolutely wonderful. Check out the Mechanical Monsters episode. Uh, that's short, uh, and that's why I, I, I love this label art so much because it immediately reminded me of this Superman cartoon short. Now, uh, Max and Dave Fleischer were part of that early animation boom in the uh, 1920s, 30s, 40s. Max Fleischer is known for uh, a couple of different uh, revolutionary animation uh, tools and processes, one of which is rotoscoping. Now, you've heard that term over and over and over and over and over again over the years. Rotoscoping is uh, projecting a uh, piece of film footage uh, and then having the animator trace over that action. And then when you run those, uh, those new animated pages, you can get the character to have this really nice, uh, smooth, human flowing kind of motion. And he utilized that in a lot of his animated motion pictures. Max Fleischer and Dave Fleischer are known for Betty Boop cartoons, the early Popeye cartoons, these Superman shorts, and also for a full-length animated feature movie called Gulliver's Travels. It was made about 1938-1939, right around the time that Walt Disney was producing and releasing Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, uh, Walt Disney beat Max Fleischer to the punch in releasing a full-length animated feature film. I think Snow White was 1937, and I think Gulliver's Travels was either 1938 or 1939. But Gulliver's Travels is definitely worth giving a watch. It is absolutely wonderful. The animation is terrific. I really, really enjoyed it when I first saw it when I was a kid. Again, this is another one that has been digitally restored. You can probably find it on YouTube or other streaming services, but make sure you get a good digital restoration so you can see all the wonderful animation, all the great scenery. Uh, the character of Gulliver, I believe, was rotoscoped, so you see this really beautiful, fluid human motion uh, in the character and some of the other uh, animated cartoon characters, the smaller characters, because Gulliver is in the um, the kingdom where everyone is small and he's a giant. Uh, you know, they <laughs> they run around in some really neat uh, cartoon animated kind of antics that are characteristic of these fun, rounded kind of animated characters. Uh, a neat contrast to the uh, smooth human motion of the Gulliver character, but it really is a terrific, terrific uh, animated movie. I originally saw Gulliver's Travels when I was, I think, in uh, elementary, junior high, and one of the late night shows uh, showed this movie. I had never heard of it, uh, and uh, there was, uh, I think it was a film professor, and I think it was on public TV, and it was like a 11 o'clock midnight show where he showed different films, and this was one that he selected, and he gave the history of it, and I was just blown away, and I thought, how come we haven't heard of this movie? Well, you know, there is a, a, a wonderful history behind the uh, Fleischer Studios and how they produced the Popeye movies, the Betty Boop cartoons, Gulliver's Travels, these wonderful Superman shorts, really worth exploring uh, the treasure of uh, animation that the Fleischer brothers uh, brought to the film world. And uh, really some really, really terrific stuff. So that's why I am so drawn to the future fiction label. <laughs> Long story short, right? Yeah, I know it took me a bit of a... Bit of a way to get to the point, but that is the point. I, I immediately I immediately identified with the Future Fiction label because of the Superman cartoon shorts, that comic book art from the 40s and 50s, all of that. It just really, really drew me in. And really, the label sold it to me, but the shave soap inside really, really put it over the top. That was wonderful to, to experience that lather and that quality of, uh, of shave soap. Uh, it was just absolutely wonderful. The scent is beautiful. I remember after first using it, I handed it to my niece, Bryn, and I said, what do you think about this? And she's, oh, Uncle Mark, that's wonderful. Yeah, 
Anybody who gets that scent of future fiction really, really likes it a lot. And again, it's one of these scents you can use year round, particularly great in the spring and the summer though. I will say that. But the label art really pulled me in. And it's because of all these great uh, comic book art and comic strip art from the 1940s and 1950s, the Flash Gordons, the Buck Rogers, the Superman, uh, really, really terrific stuff. So if you do get a chance, really, please uh, get up to YouTube and check out the Superman cartoon shorts by the Fleischer Brothers Animation Studios, as well as Gulliver's Travels. Really, really terrific. And if you got little kids uh, or little grandkids, Gulliver's Travel is a delightful movie for them to sit down and watch. Uh, it's just a terrific, uh, terrific family fair. Really, really wonderful. Some really uh, happy, snappy tunes going on. Just really, really terrific stuff. So uh, give it a look when you get a chance. The Fleischer Brothers, the Superman cartoon shorts, and also Gulliver's Travels. And that wraps up another second cup. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who contributed to today's show. And I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup. Mm-hmm.